Good morning, friends. Let's discuss what is a local system versus a distributed system. Big data cannot be processed or stored in a local system or a single node. Big data that we are talking here is, as we discussed in the previous video as well, that it deals with uh, in petabytes, exabytes, or zettabytes. This is a big, very, very huge data. And in a single node, for example, or a machine, for example, in my local machine that I have, I have got the RAM of only 16 GB. And if, we, if I want to uh, uh, add additional uh, memory or CPU and all, I can just choose a single machine. For example, I can increase the RAM from 16 GB to 32, 64 or 128 GB at the maximum. But there's a limit for that. I cannot go beyond a certain limit for the RAM or a CPU. So maybe for the hard disk, I can go maximum by uh, adding additional uh, hard disk to like maximum two terabytes. But here we are talking about a, a big data, big data in zettabytes or petabytes. It's, it's a very, very, very big data. Just to refresh here again, that it's not about gigabyte or terabytes, but the big data is about zettabytes, which is 10 to the power 21. As if we compare it with uh, terabyte, for example, it's it's around seven, eight, and nine nine uh, powers more than a terabyte. Thus, we can say that a local single node will use the computation sources, CPU cores, and storage memory hard disk of a single machine only. Only vertical scaling is possible, which means we can add powerful CPU or memory to a single machine, but there will be a limit to it. We cannot go beyond a certain limit. And also there's another problem of a single point of failure. If only one local machine goes down, which makes it essential to store the important data in cloud or separate disk. One single point of failure will lose all the data and our uh, business or the system can go down. The whole system, uh, if you are supporting a server mode on a single node, if the single node goes down, the whole data would be lost unless we are not doing any data redundancy or storing it somewhere else. To avoid all the pitfalls of a single node machine or a single point of failure or vertical scaling limitations, a, di a distributed system was designed, which actually works as like this, that we have got a master node, which talks to several of worker nodes. These worker nodes are many are like a collection of uh, individual nodes with uh, some computational sources like CPU cores and memory. So as a formal definition, we can say that a distributed system has access to the computation sources, which is CPU and cores, and storage, which is memory and hard disk, across a number of machines connected through a network. Horizontal scaling is easier, horizontal scaling as opposed to vertical scaling, because if we can just add new nodes or systems to the distributed system, whenever we, have, we need like more computational power, power or a storage, we can just add a new node to our whole distributed system. And all these nodes, individual nodes are connected via a network. It also supports fault tolerance because in, 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 the, in a distributed system, it is a very common practice to for the data redundance, which means that the same data is copied across more than one or two or three nodes. So that if one of the node fails, the data is not lost. And this is how it supports fault tolerance. If one machine fails and also then the, the whole network can still go on because we are still replicating the data across not only one node, but several nodes. So to summarize, this is a very common uh, design architecture, a very high level architecture of our distributed system. As we can see that we have got a master node which talks to the client. So the client will send all those requests or the data processing or whatever it is sending to the master node and master node has got some logic or some uh, some way to route this task of uh, whatever like uh, data analytics or map producing whatever is there it will pass it to the appropriate worker nodes these are all those worker individual nodes which can have their own uh, cpu resources and memory and which will handle this uh, request from the from the master node and allocate it here and allocate some uh, some task here and then do that job. And once that job is done, it will return it back to the master, which would be served back to the client. Similarly, all these workers will have a share of task. If the data is very huge, the data would be 
like partitioned and sent across all those worker nodes by the master. And this is the way that in all these individual wo uh, workers will work indiv individually to solve that problem, to solve the task or complete the task and return the results back. So it's like splitting of the task across several nodes. And then after the task is done, aggregating the task and returning it back to the client. And also there's one more important feature of distributed system is, as we discussed that, the data which is being sent, it can be replicated across, across more than one worker nodes. So that if one worker node fails, then the data is still intact. It's not lost completely. Also, there's one way is that uh, one uh, important factor here is that what or what is the master nodes gone, uh, goes down. Now we have got a lot of uh, mechanism or, 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 or uh, like Apache Zookeeper that we have. Apache Zookeeper can, if a master node goes down, there are a lot of logics that we can choose a new master from all of these worker nodes and it will be assigned automatically. So there are a lot of uh, like leader selection algorithms uh, available via a, a system called as Apache Zookeeper. So in any way, in a sense, we can say that if the no worker nodes go down, the data is not lost, that the system will still work on as before. If the master nodes go goes down again, uh, there's, there would be a new worker which will become a master until the master goes up again. So this, in this way, the system never goes down in this type of distributed system architecture. As we have learned about local systems versus the distributed systems, in the next video, we will see the basic idea behind Apache Hadoop and MapReduce. See you all in the next video.